Matthew chapter 5, I want to read, uh, we'll pick up reading in verses number, say 39, read the rest of the chapter, and I'm sure this is familiar verses, and uh, in fact I've dealt with these verses before, this is an old, old message, and uh, I was studying, and uh, something else, and the Lord kept bringing my mind to this, and I had to hunt it up, and I preached this years ago, I hadn't preached it a long time. But it's still good, and I'll try to do the best I can with it. Matthew chapter number 5, and we'll read verses, uh, let's say verse 39. It says, But I say unto you that ye resist not evil, but whosoever shall smite thee on the right cheek, turn to him of the other also. If a man sue, I will sue thee out at the law, and take away thy coat, leave him, uh, let him have thy cloak also. Whosoever shall compel thee to go a mile, go with him twain. Give to him that asketh of thee, and from him that would borrow of thee, turn thou not away. You have heard that it hath been said, Thou shalt love thy neighbor, hate thine enemy. But I say, now Jesus is talking here. Jesus says, But I say, love your enemies. Bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, and pray for them that uh, which despisely use you and persecute you, that you may be the children of your Father which is in heaven. For he maketh his son to rise on the good and on the evil, and sendeth rain on the just and on the unjust. Amen. If you love them which love you, what reward of you? Do not even the publicans the same. If you salute your brethren only, what do you more than others? Do not leave the publicans so. Be therefore perfect, even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. Uh, in these verses, there's a lot of truths in these verses. I thought about, I thought about a few of these verses here that would really bring revival in our churches and our life. I thought about uh, verses uh, number 43. He said, If you have heard it said, been, Thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thy enemies. That's what the world says. But he said, I say unto you, love your enemies. <laughs> if we could just learn to love our enemies, he'd probably help a lot, wouldn't he? And then he says in that verse, Bless them that curse you. Amen. Instead of trying to get evil and even with them, he said, Just thank them for it. Amen. Amen. Uh, just bless them for it. And then he said, uh, goes on, he says, do good to them and hate you. Yeah. Find somebody that don't like you, go mow the yard or take them out to eat or wash the car. Amen. Right. Come on now, help me out. Yeah, right. <laughs> That's what he says in here. And he says, pray for them that spite for use you and persecute you. Amen. Amen. Boy, if we could get a hold of that verse, it'd bring yeah, revival, right. would it, in our hearts and our lives. But I'm going to go back to verse 41. I'm going to preach out of verse 41, just one verse. And uh, Jesus is right, uh, talking here. In fact, a good study is in this chapter, go back and study it. And Jesus says what the law says and the world says, but then he says, I say. And it sure does make a difference what he says. Amen. Amen. But in verse 41, it just seemed like verse 41, it seemed like it's one of them verses that just is, is inserted. In other words, the verses in front of it don't have a thing to do with it. And the verses out of it don't really have a thing to do with it. It's just one of them verses in the Bible where Jesus is writing or Jesus is speaking and the, the writer is writing and all of a sudden he's just like, by the way, <laughs> and he throws this verse in. Amen. This is kind of like verse 41 is. In other words, Jesus kind of like says, and by the way, whosoever shall compel thee to go a mile, go with him twain. In other words, he said, whosoever shall ask of thee to go one mile, just go ahead and go two miles. Amen. Right. I remember a Sunday school teacher teaching one time and she was trying to teach the, learn the kids these verses and, and that, that particular verse and she had it rolled up and everything and, and was trying to get them right and they quoted it and everything with her. She waited a few minutes and said, anybody knows that verse? And well, the boy raised his hand and uh, she said, okay, quote it. And he said, whosoever shall compel thee to go a mile, go with him by train. Amen. <laughs> and, uh, but that's not really what it says. Amen. But uh, what he says is, Whosoever shall compel thee, or ask of thee, or beg of thee, to go one mile, go with him twain. We'll talk about going the second mile. Going the second mile. Uh, here in these verses of Scripture, God is talking to this Jewish crowd. And uh, they didn't, uh, didn't want to go one mile, much less two miles. And they hated this. Let me give you a history of this verse. In the Jewish customs, when a Roman, when a Roman uh, soldiers or a Roman army would come in and they would conquer a town, they would overpower the town and conquer it. They would set up 
my friend, a, 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 a wall or some kind of thing, and they would cause the Jewish men to walk under it, signifying that the Romans was in power. And from that day on, those Jewish boys had to obey and they had to pay tribute unto the Roman power as long as they was in charge. Well, the Jews hated that. And so when a Roman soldier would come in or a bunch of them and take over the city, they would walk under that wall, walk under that gate. And my friend, from that point on now, they had to pay tribute, they had to obey, my friend, everything that the Romans had them to do. And so they hated that because they didn't want to do what the Romans wanted to do. And the Romans could call on them to do something. And my friend, they hated that, even though by law they was obligated to do that. I, I thought about it. Some of it was pay taxes. <laughs> I don't like to pay taxes either, but uh, can you imagine how the Jews felt? From then on, they had to pay taxes as long as this Roman power was in charge. And uh, one of the things, one of the rules was, if a Roman soldier come by, say he was carrying a pack or a, a case or a box, he could look at one of them uh, Romans, uh, could look at one of them Jewish boys and ask him and demand him to carry it. And by law, he had to carry it at least one mile. Uh, he couldn't get out of it. He, he, he may have hated it. He may not want to do it, but he had to face the consequences or carried it one mile. And said because of that law, most of the little Jew boys measured a mile from their home, north, east, west, and south, put a peg up, and my friend, when them Roman soldiers come by and commanded them or demanded them to carry a load for a mile, they know just exactly how far they had to carry it. And they would carry it to that, that mile marker they had, and that's as far as they carried They could sit it down. The Roman soldier couldn't do anything about it. And my friend, they would go home and leave them sitting there, and they didn't want to go a mile, and they must less go another mile. But can you imagine how they felt when Jesus come along and said, Hey, by the way, <laughs> whosoever shall compel thee to go one mile, just go ahead and go two miles. <laughs> I imagine their inundation got stirred up. Amen. And you know what we said? You know, most of us don't want to go a mile, much less the second mile. You know what that means? That means uh, that going the second mile means doing more than you're reasonably expected. Doing more that's required of thee. Going just a little bit farther in your life. Going a little just a bit farther in your efforts and just still doing what we just have to do. Most of us, you know, we're happy just to do what's required of us. You ever seen, if you don't believe it, ask, ask the treasurers over here. They get tithe checks, $14.91. They wouldn't give nine more cents to make it even. They're going to give it right down to the penny. Yeah. Only thing they owe God. Amen. Come on now, help me. And my friends, sometimes, you know, uh, we don't really want to. We, I think sometimes we got imaginary pegs in our life. How far we're going to go with God. Right. How faithful we're going to be. Amen. How involved we're going to be. Right. And you know what I thought? We need to pull up some of them pegs in our life and just go a little bit farther and just do a little extra for the Lord. Amen. Whosoever shall compel thee to go a mile, my friend, he said, just go ahead and go two miles. Amen. Amen. And so going the second mile. I'll give you three things that happens when you go the second mile. I thought about, first of all, going the second mile always puts a deposit of happiness in your life. Amen. Did you know there's no happiness in doing what you have to? Right. <laughs> oh, yeah. Amen. Come on now. Ain't no happiness. You ever, you ever had your kids? They got to get up at a certain time. Some of you men get up and go to work uh, at a certain time. So you get up at 5 o'clock in the morning. I bet every morning when you get up and that clock goes off at 5, you probably jump up and kiss the clock and holler, Hallelujah! I get to go to work. No, there ain't no happiness. He's like, oh, man, be glad when I retire. I wish I didn't have to work. I wish I had as much money as so-and-so had. You know, there's no joy in really doing what you have to do. Right. Amen. Amen. Uh, you ever go, so I, we travel all the time, eating people's houses. In all these years we've traveled, I've never had nobody. My friend, fix a meal for us. Uh, and my friend, when we get through the meal, they look at you and say, Preacher, are you through? And we say, yeah, I'm through. And they jump, the lady of the house jumps up and says, Woo! Thought y'all never get through. I get to wash dishes one more time. 
<laughs> no, there ain't no joy in doing what you have to do. Amen? Come on now. I, I bet every one of you men get up every week at, at some time during the week and say, Woo, hallelujah, I get the mold of your heart. Huh? You know why? There's no joy in really in doing what you have to do. But joy comes when you go a little extra and do just a little more that's required of you to do. That's where real joy comes. I thought about, I thought about in this, this, uh, these verses of scripture I thought about I read about a doctor one time and he was a big famous doctor and he operated in a kind of like an amphitheater and young doctors and nurses would come and sit and watch him and learn from him as he worked with his hands and done these operations and, and they would learn from him and so one time he was operating and my friend when he got to my friend he had uh, a little young guy a little young, young intern came down and he said sir can I ask you a question he said yes sir and he said does not not all science teach and doesn't all the medical teach uh, that when that surgery is done one knot is all that's required when you sew him up the old doctor looked at him and smiled and said yes sir all the medical science teaches us that my friend all your medical books and training teach you if you do it right in that surgery when you get to one knot all required for you when you sew that last knot and he said I know what you're going to ask me he said you're going to ask me why I didn't tie one why I didn't tie two but why I tie three and the young boy said yeah being the great doctor you are all the science teaching it's okay why did you tie two more instead of just tying one he said well no he said that that third knot is my sleep knot he said when I go home tonight in my mind he said I'm going to go back through that surgery yeah. and said I get to that place of sewing up and finishing I'm going to realize I didn't tie but one knot I tied two knots and I tied three knots and I know it's not going to come loose and I'm going to roll over and go to sleep you know sometimes that little third knot that, that little extra that little more that's required can bring peace and joy in your heart that'll never happen my friend listen this will help you home this will help your work life this will help your church life whosoever shall compel thee to go one mile God said just go ahead and go two miles it'll put happiness in your heart that nothing else to bring. Can you imagine? Can you imagine? Uh, 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 give me a songbook or something. Uh, my friend gave me, I'll just use this. Can you imagine? Let me give you an illustration. I told you that little Jew boy had to measure a mile off from his home all the time. Can you imagine? My friend, some, here's a little boy. He's out there hoeing corn. Uh, and Brother Brian, here comes one of them soldiers carrying a load. Uh, he come out and says, hey boy, come here and carry this. Uh, and my friend, uh, that Jew boy don't want to do it. Uh, acts like he don't hear him. Uh, and he says, hey boy, by law, you got to carry this. You come get it. That, and the little boy throws his hold down, goes over there, reluctantly picks it up, uh, just drags along. Uh, my friend, he he makes the he slows the guy down, uh, and the, the the Roman soldier looks at and said, "How's your day?" He said, "Shut up! Uh, I may have to carry you low, but don't have to talk to you." Uh, and my friend, when he gets out there, he gets to his mile. There's his pig. He don't have to go no farther. He lays it down. He said, "That's as far as I gotta go. I don't have to go any farther." And if this thing ever turns around, I'm gonna make you care. A ton, 40 miles. And he goes back up the road. His days weren't, he's had to go a mile. He picks up his hoe, and my friend, he just breaks it over the fence post. He heads to the house. Here comes the dogs and the young uns. He kicks the young uns, slaps the dogs, fusses at his wife. She says, Hey, I know what you did today. You went a mile. Right. <laughs> Come on now, help me out. Because you always come home in that heel attitude when you've had to go just a mile. Yeah, Amen. Well, let's turn it around. Suppose that he's out there hoeing corn. And my friend, here comes that Roman soldier. Says, hey boy, here, come and carry this load. He throws that hole down, jumps over the fence, picks it up. My friend just takes off down through there just to get it. That old Roman soldier about to get, gets about to run to keep up with him. And boy, he looks up and says, tell me about this one. He said, how's your day? Oh, he said, it's been wonderful. I appreciate you letting me carry your load. And tell me a little bit that Roman power. And they're talking and walking and getting with it. He comes up to his mile peg. He just keeps on going. He keeps on carrying it on down the road somewhere. That Roman soldier looks at him and says, hey, wait a minute, boy. You done passed your mile marker. You done passed your peg out there. He said, oh, don't worry about it. He said, I'll carry it to the city. I enjoyed talking to him. And when he gets down there at the end and he can't go in the city, he sets it down, shakes his hand, said, appreciate you coming by. Let me carry a load. If you ever come back to, be sure and holler at me. That old boy goes back up the road saying, 
in amazing grace how sweet the sound picks up his hoe holds about three rows of corn in one goes toward the house my friend he pets the dogs hugs his youngins kisses his wife she said I know what you done today you went a mile you went two miles because you come home with an attitude of joy and happiness when you went the second mile I'll tell you, go on the second mile or put a spirit of joy and happiness in your heart. Sometimes it ain't that chapter that's required of you. It's that next chapter that's not required where you get that real joy and real that blessing. Huh? I'm talking about going the second mile. Maybe that's why we got so many sad people sitting around. They're one milers. Amen. <laughs> Come on now, help me out. Uh, my friend, listen. Uh, I, I thought about this. Uh, my friend, I, I, remember, I remember years ago, and I've talked about this before, but I remember years ago we lived in the old house, and uh, Kate cooked a good supper, and, uh, and she always uh, did back to the boys, uh, uh, back to the days when the boys was home, they left home, and we go out now. Amen. Ain't amazing how they quit cooking when all the young ones leave. Amen. But anyway, uh, my friend, listen, uh, she cooks a good supper that night, and she got in there, and we had a playroom back there, and the boys was back there playing in the playroom. I come through the kitchen. She doesn't have the dishes washed. She doesn't have everything cleaned up. And Brother Brown, she was making chocolate chip cookies. Uh, I said, what are you doing? Uh, she said, I'm making chocolate chip cookies. Uh, and I said, boy. Yeah. And she said, don't tell the boys. I'm going to surprise them. So I headed to the playroom. I figured that's where the cookies was coming. And so I went back and was playing and had with the boys having a good time. And directly here come Kay. And she said, all right, close your eyes. I know what's coming. I closed mine anyway. I thought, well, that's the only way you don't get one. Amen. And so we are standing there. I'm standing there. And the boys standing there. And all of a sudden she said, open them. And she had that plate of chocolate chip cookies. Boy, them boys got excited. Let me back up. We got excited. And we grabbed them cookies. And boy, we had a handful them boys had a handful and I looked at Kay she had a big old smile on her face as she turned and went back to the kitchen I went in there and I told her I said you know what you labored over supper and I said that's, that's one of your responsibilities to fix supper for your family and you done that and I said you cleaned the kitchen up and cleaned the table and washed the dishes but I said hey, that ain't what put that smile on your face I said nobody asked you to fix cookies nobody asked you to do anything extra but I said when you went a little, little something extra and you seen the spot on them boys face that's what brought that joy that's what brought that peace and I'm going to tell you what when you go the second mile I finish your house it'll change and put joy in your home it'll put joy in your church life it'll put joy in your work life God said whosoever shall compel thee to go one mile just go two miles <laughs> yeah, you say boy my home's a mess everybody's healed and fussing start going the second mile for each other <laughs> it'll put joy in your heart Joy and happiness, amen. Come on now, help me out. Huh? My boys, my boys, they they go on vacation and stuff, and and uh, I go mow the yard. <laughs> If I'm home, I go mow the yard. My wife said, what are you mowing your yard for? She said, that you go on vacation, don't never mow your yard. I said, I didn't mow their yard to get them to mow my yard. I said, I know when they get home, I said, they got one day, they got to go back to work. And I said, I just go over there so when they get home, they don't have to do all that. It's already done. And my friend, they can come home and relax and get ready to go to battle work. And my friend, you know what? I go over and mow the yard. I, I like to mow anyway. I don't want to mow y'all's yard, but I like to mow. And, and, and so, but you know what? I go over and mow it, y'all, and I'm just sweating. And when I get through mowing, you know what I do? I get in that truck and I turn around and look. And there's that yard mowed. I know that boy's going to come home. He ain't going to have to do that. That's a little response. Well, I don't have to do it, but I just do it. And I leave there smiling. I leave there happy. Uh, knowing my friend, I've helped them a little bit. Uh, that old work, that work is hard. Uh, but when you look at the results of it and the smile that's going to be on their face, uh, it puts joy in your heart. Uh, I don't tell you what, my friend, uh, if you want some happiness, uh, quit trying to be a one miler. Uh, quit trying just to do what you have to do. Uh, thank God, go the second mile. Go beyond the call of duty. Go beyond what's reasonable. It'll put joy in your heart. Uh, that nothing else will bring. Amen. I'm talking about I'm talking about the real joy and happiness of the Lord in your heart. Not only my friend, the second mile calls it a thousand of happiness in your heart, but going the second mile will call for the best in others. Do you know you ain't never impressed nobody going a mile? <laughs> you ain't never molded nobody but going one mile. <laughs> Amen. You ain't never stirred nobody up doing what you have to. Right. Come on now, help me out. He said, listen, whosoever shall compel thee to go a mile, go with him twain. It not only joy in your heart, but it calls for the best in others. I thought about, I thought about David and the giant. Yeah. The, 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 the Israel's army was defeated. They seen this big old giant roar. Yeah. 
Can you imagine that big old giant rolled out, you know? Yeah. And here he comes. Give me a man! And the, the, and the uh, soldiers of Israel would run and hide. Yeah. Amen? Amen? I mean, here they'd go. They, they, they're, they're tough. They'd won wars before. Man, and all of a sudden, this giant walk out. My friend said, give me a man! Man, they'd duck down behind them rocks, scared to death. Yeah. And here come little old David along just to check on them. And all of a sudden, that giant roared out. And they said, man, David said, who is that? And they said, man, you ain't heard of him. Get down, David. My friend, he look at the size of him. Look at the size of that armor. My friend, they were scared. They was ready to throw the towel in. They was ready to quit. And David said, is there not a cause? And my friend this guy has defiled the least I'll fight him and the Bible said he went down there and they got before the king and the king looked at him and you know Solomon won all of went and fought him anyway my friend but here's the little David he said well you can't do that he said listen I done whooped the pair I done whooped the lion and this fella ain't going to be no problem and he killed him little five stones and went down there can you imagine David's brother can you imagine some of them old soldiers looked up there and they're hid behind them rocks looking at poor old David poor old David my friend he's going to go to nothing. They're going to kill him in a minute. Poor old David. But all of a sudden David puts that sling in there. He didn't have to. He didn't have to. He didn't have to be there. His daddy told him, go down there. See how your brother are. Give him your supplies. Come back to the house. That's his mile. That's the only mile he had to run. He didn't have to get involved in the warfare. He didn't have to get involved with that job. That job. He could have sat around and said, that's y'all's business. I'm out of here. I'm gone. But you know what he said? Is there not a cause? And he went down and faced that giant. Can you see? Put that stone in there and slung her around. About three good times. One for the Father and Son and the Holy Ghost and let her go. And that giant stone hit him right there. My friend, he fell forward. Run up there. Can you imagine when he cut his head off? My friend, he raised that head and raised it up. That old defeated crowd, that old discouraged crowd. You know what happened to them? They looked up and said, did you see that? And the Bible said they jerked their sword out and said, give me one of them. And they went to war. You know what pulled them out of there? David went the second mile and it motivated it, touched the others. If you want to life, touch other people's lives, go the second mile. Right. If you husbands start going second mile for your wife, yeah. you might have a little better place to rent home. <laughs> and if your wives would start going the second mile for your husband, yeah. and your parents would go the second mile for your kids, yeah. and your kids would go the second mile for your parents, you ain't no telling you what a happy home you'd have. Amen. Amen. Now come on, help me out, huh? That ain't my job. You ever heard that? That ain't my job. <laughs> I told my one, I told my boy one time. I said, you know, we all had jobs and responsibilities at our house, and that's the way I was raised, and that's what we do. We all my, my boys had to work. We worked. We had grandkids living there. They worked. That's just what we do. And, uh, and 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 my oldest boy told me one time. He said, but that ain't my job. <laughs> I said, I said, you'll think it's your job when I get through your hunting. Yeah. I said, you, you'll be wanting that job every week, buddy. Uh, you know what? It ain't my job. And I thought, well, just go ahead and do it. You might be surprised what would happen if you just go ahead and do something for somebody else. Oh, Even on your work life, you go to second mile for your boss, he probably go to second mile for you. In your church life, you go to the second mile for your pastor. Your pastor will go to the second mile for you. You go to the second mile for your fellow brother. God will let them somewhere down the road go to the second mile for you. We'd be running over each other going to the second mile. Amen. I'm talking about it pulls the best in others. I remember, I remember years ago uh, we we was in Chattanooga back in uh, what uh, late early uh, late seventy nines and early eighty somewhere in there. I was down in Chattanooga pastoring a little church and man we was about to starve to death <laughs> and uh, they supposed to pay us so much with Joss and never did come in. I uh, never did have that much and we just took whatever they got and sometimes we get nothing. I was trying to paint on the side and preach and run meetings and pastor that church and we was about to starve to death. Didn't hardly have nothing. Sometimes we just have soup to eat, but we was happy. We was happy we was doing what the Lord wanted. And now we'll forget we, that's back when the when, when the Kmart, you know when the Kmart was around uh, and the big K's in little stores. Some of y'all don't remember them stores. Uh, all y'all knows Amazon. But anyway, there was stores like that. Uh, and, and now we'll forget we went we went down there to, to uh, Kmart. Uh, it was Kmart wasn't it, Mama? And went down to Kmart and just had Whitney then. He just a little fella. And I told him, I said, uh, I said, listen uh, uh, let, let me just back up. We had we had a certain jobs at our house. We'd Done. Me, I had certain things I done. Kay had certain things her done. She done. And Whitney had certain things he done. And one of his jobs was my friend to, uh, to to vacuum and different things like. One of my jobs was to put the dishes up. Kay would wash the dishes. We didn't have we didn't have dishwashers back then. Uh, the only one we had is one I married. Amen. Hey, we didn't have them electric things that so we had to wash them. And she she'd wash them and I'd put them up. 
That was one of my jobs. And I never will forget, come through the house, and listen, I looked, and the, 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 the dishes was already put up. And I thought, well, that's strange. And I went up to okay. I said, did you put them dishes up? She said, no. And I looked in there, okay, uh, Whitney, he just agreed. And I, I said, son, did you, did you put them dishes up? He said, yeah. I said, man, what happened to you? And he said, well, I've done my chores. And when I got through, I said, I just still in the mood to work. And I come through the kitchen and said, i seen the dishes. And I just went ahead and put them up. Amen. And I hugged him real good and thanked him for that. Well, a few weeks later, we was down at Kmart. <laughs> And we cut the motor off. I don't know if you ever had to do this, Brother Josh. But I said, listen, we ain't got no money. <laughs> I said, we just barely got a little money. And I said, okay, get what you got to get, and that's it. And I looked at Wetty, and I said, don't you ask for nothing. We ain't got the extra money. I said, we got that over with. Made him a little speech. We got out. We walked in the came hard. Kay got the little buggy. We started down through there. We went in there two or three minutes. Here come Whitney running up there. I had my friend, Dad, can I have this? And it was rolling off of my tongue. I was fixed to say, boy, did you not hear my speech? <laughs> and before I could get it out, I thought about that extra that he'd done, putting up them dishes we didn't have to. I said, put it in the buggy. Yeah. And my wife looked at me and said, didn't think we had no money. I said, we ain't got much money. But I said, he went the second mile for us the other day and done something extra. I cannot turn him down. You know what? It pulled it out of me. He went the second mile. And there's something pulled out of me to my friend do something for him. I'll tell you what, when you go the second mile for God, it'll cost God to go the second mile and do something extra. When you go the second mile right for others and your family and God, it'll cause others to pull out. That one's discouraged. Might pull up a little bit if you learn to go the second mile for them. I'm talking about it calls for the best in others. It'll pull it out. Amen. Then, then let me say this. You know, sometimes, sometimes, you know, you go the second mile will impress your kids. Yeah. I remember, we've always been, been this way. We, we do this. We've always tried to help people. Sometimes we just pick out somebody at Cracker Barrel. Now, if we're eating today at Cracker Barrel and y'all there, don't expect this. But <laughs> <laughs> sometimes we'll just look around and I say, hey, pick somebody out here and we'll buy others out there. And uh, she'll pick somebody out and and we'll get the ticket and buy the supper. And, you know, they, they, they just smile and look at you and hold. It makes their day, I guess. It makes my day. Amen. We don't have to do that. just something we do. And I'll tell you this. We, we done it one time. I told Kay. I said, you see that old man woman over there? And I said that respectfully. He's probably in their 80s. And a, a man woman sitting over there. And I said, I said, just go on up there and look around. I'm going to get their ticket and buy their, buy their supper. And, and so I went over to Josh. And, and I, I didn't know who they was. And I said, hey, I'm Pritchard Goodson. I said, how y'all doing? They said, we're doing fine. I, and the ticket laying there. And I picked up. I said, if y'all don't care, I said, I'd like to buy you your, your supper. And they said, oh, you don't have to do that, sir. I said, I don't have to. I said, if I have to, I probably wouldn't. But I said, I, I just don't do it. I said, I just won't do it because I, I just felt like I could do it. And they said, well, well, we appreciate it. You know, everything. I went and paid for the ticket. It was about two weeks later, we was back down at Cracker Barrel. And we, me and Kay come walking through, and that old couple was sitting there. You know what that woman said? She looked up and said, there's that old man that bought our supper. Amen. I thought, I turned around and thought, that hey, old man. I'm my friend, but listen, it made an impression on them. And you know, sometimes when you do something extra, it makes an impression on somebody else. They don't never forget that that's the one. That's the one that motivated me. That's the one that kept praying for me. That's the one that went the extra mile and called me. That's the one that helped me. And it pulls him up just going the second mile. Puts it a positive happiness and calls for the best in others. Amen. And then let me say thirdly, going the second mile lightens life's burdens. I don't know about you, but listen, life's got enough burdens without adding to it. Amen. I mean, this, especially in the days that we live now, life, bird, life is full of birds. I guarantee you, I can go every, every one of you home with you today and sit down and talk to you. Next thing you know, you're going to start telling me some pro problems and burdens and troubles you've got. Everybody's got them. Amen. Right. Come on now. You ever see these preachers? I hate some of these preachers to fool you. They come in, you know, got their Bible up here, and they come walking in. Say, How you doing? Great. <laughs> and then when service is over, we go down to Shoney's and eat. They dump all that on you. You're thinking, I thought you said it was great. <laughs> you know, sometimes, you know, when you get rid of down to it, they ain't, they ain't so great. Amen. Right. And, you know, but, but you know what? We got all kinds of burdens. and all kinds, But you know what? Going the second mile will lift burdens sometimes. Right. Amen. Amen. 
I, I got several illustrations. That's the one I, only way I can preach this message is giving illustrations. But uh, it, it, it's kind of like it's kind of like uh, Joseph when his brethren done him wrong, right. thought him in the pit, yeah. sold him into my friend a bunch of gypsies, yeah. and all the problems he went through. When, when he came, they finally came before Joseph. Joseph could have given them a hard time. Joseph could have really got with them, amen. But you know what? That, the Bible said he fell on them and kissed them. Never said a word. Just fell on them and kissed them. And my friend, you know what? He forgave them. And the next thing you know, he's back with his daddy. He's back with his brother. Can you imagine when they went home and said, hey, Joseph is alive. Joseph is alive. He said, I don't believe it. But when he seen them wagons top the hill, he he said, Joseph is alive. And my friend, they got together and they brought him in all because Joseph went the second mile in his forgiveness. Amen. Did you know there's a lot of burdens going to be lifted if we just learn to go the second mile right. and forgive? Yeah. I wonder how many relationships could be restored. Right. Let me give this as a personal illustration. I wasn't going to give this, but I'm going to give it anyway. I, got a, I, had, a, I had a preacher friend of mine and and uh, I could call his name. Some of you may know him, but but uh, we had we had this. There's something happened. I don't really know what all happened, brother Brian. But he didn't like me no more. Can you imagine anybody not liking me? Amen. But he, he didn't like me. He, he got ill and he talked about me and everything else. I didn't know what's going on. I tried to call him. He wouldn't answer the phone. He blocked me. And I thought, man, you know my my first attitude was, well, he can live without me. I can live without him. You know, that's how, that's how we do it, ain't it? He don't have nothing to do with me. I don't have nothing to do with hell. But it eat on me on the inside. Yeah. I'm talking about a few years went on and on and on. And I thought, well, I don't know. And what was it, Mama? Two, what, back when we got first got back from, from that trip, I heard he was in a meeting about two hours from me. And the Holy Ghost spoke to my heart and said, you need to go down there at that meeting. I said, God, I don't, I don't want to learn to kill a meeting. He don't like me. He don't like me. He's going to sit there and look at me while he preaches. You know, you got all kinds of excuses. Come on, y'all ain't exempt. Y'all don't, I ain't seen none of y'all running around asking everybody to forgive you. Amen. 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 And some people say, I'll die first. And the Holy Ghost spoke Amen. to me. He said, you need to go down to that meeting. I said, okay. So I told Kay, I said, I'm going to drive down to that meeting. So I drove down there about two hours to that meeting. Got out, got there about 15 minutes before church, and I walked to the vestibule back there like that, and I walked in, and that brother, that brother that's preaching, he was standing across the, the vestibule from me. And he looked up, and he saw me. And when he saw me, you know what? Tears began to flow down his cheek. Amen. He started crying, and I walked in. I walked over to him, and we met about halfway. And I told him, I said, hey, brother. I said, God told me to come down here and hear you preach tonight. And I said, I'm just coming down to hear you preach I said, I hadn't heard you preach in a long time. He looked at me and tears were rolling down his face. And I said, listen, I don't know what happened to us. And I don't know, I don't even know what's going on. I don't even know what your thoughts is. But I said, I tell you, whatever it is, I'm sorry. If I hurt you anyway, I'm sorry. I didn't even know what I said I'm sorry for. I said, I'm sorry. And if I don't need anything, forgive me. And tears started rolling down his face. You know what? He looked at me and he said, Brother Goodson, I'll tell you what, let's do. He said, let's just forget about all that. And from this point on, we'll just run together till Jesus comes. I went and heard him preach and shouting, hey man, he might walked out the door. We hugged nuts and left. All that stuff's gone. My friend, I could rebel. I could refuse. I just drove about two hours and went the second mile. My friend took all the blame. And God, the Holy Ghost, just worked that out. There ain't no telling what burdens could be left it if you just go the second mile and forgive people and love people and help people it's amazing what things could be brought back together and burdens could be lifted I remember I remember years ago I had a meeting down in the coast this is back before pastor probably in the 80s I guess and I, was, I run the roads for 15 years by myself Kay had to raise the boys and she had her, her parents and and so I run the roads pretty well by, by myself all the time. And I was gone. I'd preach. 
I preached Sunday through Wednesday on one meeting and be somewhere. I'll be in Ohio on Wednesday night and be in Florida on Thursday night. Just run the road trying to keep going, trying to get preached and had booked wide open and, and everything and, and I'd go home and what time I had home we enjoyed it and, and, and everything and wasn't no, no, wasn't no problems with it. Uh, uh, I, I never will forget, I, went, I was going to leave for a meeting. I'd got in on late Friday night early way up in Saturday mornings and uh, I got to bed and slept about three hours and I had two sets of clothes. Hey, back in those days I didn't even have, I didn't even have a closet slick in the house. I lived in their van. All my clothes was in the van. I'd go and I'd come home. We had two sets of clothes. I'd take them out and Kay wash that set, and she'd put the other set in in the van while I slept, and then we'd leave again, and she'd wash them while I was gone. And I never forget. Came in, and I slept three or four hours. Had to get up and be in the North Carolina early Sunday morning. And I, I started to leave, and Kay looked at me, and she said, "I know you got to go, and I know you got to preach, and and I'm not complaining about that." She said, "This is just one week. I wish you was off and just could stay home." And I looked at her and I said, you know, I, I wish I could too. But I said, i got to go. You know, in those days you had to feed your family. And I said, I, I've got to go. I said, i got to preach. I done got it booked and everything. She said, I know that. And she wasn't really complaining. She just, just, just burdened down and, and lonely, I guess, sometimes. And, and filling with the boys and stuff on her own. And, and I will forget how we talked a little bit. And, and she's standing there crying when I got ready to leave. And when she cries, the boys cry. And she's standing there crying. The boys are holding on. They're crying. I had my friend listen. I, I got in the van. I, I didn't let them see me cry. But when I got in the van, I cried. Amen. And you know what? I, I hit the interstate. And Brother Brian, I looked up to God. I said, God, I don't know what it's going to take. But what? Whatever it takes to cheer mom up. I said, please, God, cheer her up a little bit. And I drove eight hours down to the coast and got out and went in there. My friend had no more, had no more, got in the motel room, called her. And she said, hello. I said, well, you sound better. She said, I am better. I said, well, tell me about it. She said, right after you left. Said, there's a guy knocked on our door. And I went to the door and it had a, had a bunch of flowers. And said, on that flowers. Said, he said, this is for Miss Goodson. And she said, I got it. Said, don't table, turned it over on the note and I was preaching at Bible Baptist Church and it said Bible Baptist Church to Miss Kay thank you for sharing your husband with us this week. She said that's all it took to know somebody cared. They didn't have to send that bucket of flyers. Probably didn't cost them in those days 25, 30 bucks but they'll never know what it done to her to cheer her up and lift that burden perfect out of that place of discouragement. I'm going to tell you just go on the second mile it won't cost you much. It won't won't take much effort, but you'll be surprised whose burdens could be lifted if we just go the second mile. Amen. Amen. <laughs> I thought about Esther went the second mile. She said, if I perish, I perish. And she went in knowing that he didn't raise that scepter because she's going to die. But she went the second mile, and guess what? He raised his sepulcher and the decree was changed. All because that burden of death on the Jews was lifted because Esther went the second mile. Right. I remember, I remember a, a story one time it told about this little boy. He was kind of bashful, you know, and backwards and, and wasn't really an outgoing boy. Didn't have a lot of friends. And, and uh, at school, said his mama, the, the lady was telling it, said the school kids would come down through there and he'd be about 20 foot behind by himself and didn't really have a lot of friends or nothing like that. said, Valentine's Day come. And I don't know if they still do it back in those days, you know, everybody, everybody got everybody a Valentine. Y'all remember them days? You remember them. I mean, you, you, you wrote all them boys. You wrote my Valentine, you know. <laughs> they give you one back, yeah, I'm your Valentine, you know. Hey, you, you remember them days? Come on. Some of you ain't that old. Come on. Some of you old people shout right there. Amen. You remember the days you get them old Valentines and you'd think, well, they like me. They ain't like you. They're just Valentines. And uh, said, said he told his mama before Valentines, he said, Mama, said, I need to get some Valentines. Said, all the kids is going to change at Valentines. Well, she knew that he didn't have no friends and he probably wouldn't get none anyway. So she just kind of ignored it. <laughs> Came right up to the day before and he said, Mama, uh, we're changing Valentine's tomorrow. I gotta have them. So reluctant, she went to the store. They got them. They sit down and wrote all everybody in their class. They sent them home. You know everybody's name. And she wrote everybody a little Valentine in his class. Put them in a little sack. Sent him off school the next day. 
and said she got to thinking before school was out he's going to be sad he's going to be discouraged because he ain't going to get no valentines he don't really have no friends uh, he probably ain't going to get nothing so she made some of his favorite chocolate chip cookies you know had them all ready for him had some glass, uh, a glass of milk sitting there waiting and here he comes sure enough here he comes down through there all them kids a bunch of kids they all got valentines and they're laughing talking he's about 20 foot behind them he just come down through there my friend by himself and walking she said I thought that's what it's going to be and she said come on in here Johnny said I got some of your chocolate chip cookies made and, and, and she got him in there at the table and she had the cookies and he was sitting there and she's been and all of a sudden old Johnny said mama not a one not a one and she said I thought it's, I know this is what it's going to be and she said I'm sorry son he said oh no mama you don't understand he said I didn't miss a one said everybody got a valentine amen you know, I overcome his burden and his problem. He made sure everybody else got one. Amen. Right. And I'll tell you, sometimes it ain't what you get and what you need. And the girl in the second mile is making sure everybody else gets what they need. Everybody else is taken care of. It'll put joy in your heart. Thank God it'll move your soul. My friend, it'll lift burdens in your heart right. and in your life. Good. Well, I got to hurry. Listen, I thought about this. I thought about this. You know, say, take Brian and... I can't never say her name. We called her Sister V the whole time I was on the trip. And that's the only thing I know except GPS. But uh, you, you take Brother Brian and, and his good wife. Can you imagine Brother Brian's getting ready to go to work one morning and, and she's washing dishes. And she, he comes in the kitchen and said, Hey, could you sew this button on for me? I was wanting to wear this shirt and the button's going, Could you put this on for me? And she'll say, Give it here. Why didn't you tell me the other day? It's off. She goes in there and gets a needle and thread about halfway sews it on. Comes back and pitches it at him. Says, next time, tell me when it gets loose. He gets in the car and heads to work. He thought, God, what did I marry her for? <laughs> Their home's trouble. Their home's burdens. They've they got problems. But supposing she's the washing dishes and Brother Brian comes in. He walks in and says, hey, I'm, fi I'm fixing to head to work and I was wanting to wear this shirt could you, could you sew it on for me and she drives her hand and says oh give it to me baby I love sewing buttons on for you <laughs> she goes back there and sews that button on good and comes back he stands there and she pulls it up on his shoulders and he puts his arm on it she pulls it around and butts it up squeezes him gives him a little kiss on the cheek you know what he goes, <laughs> he goes out the door thinking man I buried the best woman in the world See what, just a little act of kindness, a little act of uh, going the second mile. You know, you see what it turns around from a hell home to a heavenly little home. Amen. Then, hey, suppose it, suppose it, in that first one, when she's a fussing and griping, at the end of the week, at the end of the week, she comes around and said, listen, the budget, say, I've been a little over our budget, and could, could you give me an extra, I need an extra $5. And she'd, he'd say, well, what do you do with all your money? Oh, my. <laughs> But after he kissed her and, you know, sold it up real nice, she'll say, hey, honey, run a little tight. I, I need an extra $5 on our budget. He said, I don't know what you do with all your money. And he hands her 10 or $20. You know what? You know what got that extra? She went the second mile. It made him go the second mile for her. How you could turn your home into a little heaven. <laughs> Come on now. Hey, man. You know, you ever, you ever had these people? I've done that last time. Well, do it two or three more times. Right. Come yeah. on now. Yeah. It lightens life. Let me let me give you one thing. And I'm gonna close. Let's, I thought about I thought about it in the Bible terms. I thought about Onesimus. You remember Onesimus? Yeah. He got thrown in jail with Paul, stealing from his master. Yep. And Paul talked to him. Said, "What's wrong with you? What are you in here for?" Can you imagine Onesimus said, "I oh, shut up. I may be in jail with you, but I don't have to talk to you." <laughs> but you know, after two or three days sitting in the dungeon, <laughs> just you and one other guy, you'll get where you'll talk. Amen. They finally get on talking turn. Paul leads them to Christ. Yeah. And Paul talks to him, teaches him some. And then all of a sudden, it comes time for, for Onesimus to get out. And he said, we're going to get you out the next morning. And they get ready. And so Paul sits down that night and writes a letter. And he sends that letter. He sends that or gives that letter the next morning. They come to get Onesimus. And they, he gives them that letter. And he says, here, take this. Take this to your master. I don't even believe Onesimus ever even read it. I believe he carried that. And can't you see him? He goes out of the gate. They set him free. He wants to run, but yet he wants to go home. Right. He looks at that letter and says, oh, wait a minute. I've got a letter. Paul gave me a letter. And he goes home. Can you imagine? He gets down there next to that gate. Somebody looks and says, somebody's coming. And they look and say, it's Onesimus. 
And the time he gets to the gate and he opened the gate, his, his, his master's standing there. He looks at him and says, Oh, this was all the gall. All the gall after what you've done. You stole from us and you caused shame. Why in the world would you come back? I believe old Nisbet just handed him that letter. He said, I met a man. He said, give you this. And can you imagine his master opens it up? He what it says. He old Paul says, he says, not not as a servant, but as a not now as a servant, but above a servant, a brother, especially to me. How much more unto thee, both in the flesh and in the Lord? If thou count me therefore a partner, receive him as myself. If he wronged thee, put it on my account. I Paul. Can you imagine about that time he says, Welcome home, on this one. Paul didn't have to write that letter, but he wrote it. <laughs> and it lifted that burden. It, it solved that distance between slave and master. And all he done is took time. You know, sometimes it'd be amazing what happened if he just sent somebody a card. Amen. You'd be surprised. Just a phone call. Amen. Amen. I got a preacher friend, man lives up here in Ohio. Been going through a lot of problems and health problems, health issues. He's wearing a jacket now just to keep his heart going until they can get other things going for him. And he's been really down. He's been, and I preached for him for years and I preached for his son now. He's probably the pastor of the church. And, and I was riding up the road the other day and, and the Holy Ghost spoke to my heart and said, you, you, need, to, you need to pray for, for Brother Kesey. And I said, I will, Lord. And I bowed my head and the Holy Ghost spoke. So he said, no, I want you to call him to pray. And I called him on the phone and he answered the phone. I'm riding up the highway. I know you're not supposed to be on your phone on your highway, but I figured I wasn't going to wreck because God told me to call it. But anyway, I'm riding up the road and I'm talking. Brother Casey answered the phone. He said, hello. I said, Brother Casey, it's Brother Gustin. Well, boy, Brother Gustin, I didn't think about you calling. I said, I didn't call to socialize. I didn't call to talk to Brother Casey. I said, God told me to call and pray for you. So I'm going to pray for you right now. And I started praying for him. You know, the other day alone, all I could hear was sobs and weeping and crying and weeping and sobbing and directly I heard him go Woo! and he's a shouting on the other phone I'm a praying he's a shouting and my friend he's a shouting so much I just hung the phone up and my friend listen I, my friend he sent me a text later on he said brother Gustin I, he said I was sitting on the couch down I was feeling sorry for myself but said that phone call said I got up from there and said I'm going to go a little farther I'm going to tell you what it didn't take much just a phone call but he lifted that burden that, that was upon him amen well, let me close. Let me say this. Go on the second mile. Whosoever, whosoever shall compel thee, call upon thee to go a mile, go with him to it. Puts a deposit of happiness in your heart. Calls for the best in others. Lightens life's loads. Well, let me close with this. Jesus went the second mile. God went the second mile. Right. Let me, let me read it like this. For God. So loved the world that he went the second mile and gave his only begotten son right. that whosoever believed in him should not first but have everlasting. Right. If God went the second mile for me, God went the second mile for you, shouldn't we be willing to go the second mile? Yeah. Amen. Wicked is ungodly and worthy, and God went the second mile and sent somebody to pay a debt we couldn't pay. Yeah. Pay for our sins. Thank God and offered us eternal life. Saved us by his marvelous grace. Took us off the road to hell. Put us on the road to heaven. If God went the second mile, should not we will the second mile for him? Amen. And I want to tell you what, if you're lost today, God went the second mile for you. You ought to go the second mile and come and ask God to forgive you. Trust Christ as your Savior. Whosoever shall compel thee, ask of thee, call upon thee to go a mile. Go with him twain. Can you imagine what happened in your work life? If you went the second mile. Amen. Oh, look at workplace. Well, they're paying your bills. Right. You ought to thank God. You know, people rise up, well, I'm going to do something about this work. Well, you ought to thank God they gave you a place to work. Amen. 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 Yeah. Ain't no use griping and Just thank God you got a place to eat and a place to work where you can make money to eat. Say amen, amen. Jordan. Yeah. Amen. You missed Sunday school. You missed what that was. The car you ride in, the house you live in. It's because somebody went the second mile and started a place of business and let you come work. Right. Right. Amen? <laughs> the family you got, the wife that you thought was the best in the world. Right. You've been married 10, 15 years now. <laughs> She's the same little honey that you thought you couldn't do without. 
change your it change your little uh, help me, mama. Can I say this? Hale's nest. Can I say that word? To a honey nest. <laughs> Come on now. Huh? I wouldn't be ugly when I said that. Amen. You could change it. But she ain't like you used to be. Well, you probably ain't either. Right. 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 You, you quit opening the door a long time for her. Oh. <laughs> wow. That's good. Come on. When I, when, when, when I come home from Vietnam, I bought a Mustang. Jay's going to kill me at lunch. But I bought a Mustang. New Mustang when I come home from Vietnam. And just had, you know, them two seats, you know how they are, and the back seat ain't nothing. Had a console, you know, down there. And I bought that. Katie didn't weigh about 110 pounds. You know where she sat? On the console. I paid all that money for that car. She said, here I'm a driving. She's sitting right there on the console. Kenny Hart changed gears. Never did sit in that seat. Nice seat over She sat on the console. Some of y'all know what I'm talking about. Right. Yeah. Amen. Of course, nowadays, you know, the girl does all the driving. The boy would have to sit on the console. But anyway, <laughs> she sat she sat on the, in that console. And then after we got married, it wasn't long, she was sitting over in that seat. And one day she looked and she said, you know what? It seemed like we ain't as close as we was. I said, I ain't moved a lick. I'm still driving. You're the one moving. Yeah. You know, sometimes when you feel like you ain't as close as you ought to be with God, he ain't moved. Right. He's still sitting on the throne. You're the one who's moved away. Amen. You're the one that's pulled back. Come on now, help me out. You know what you ought to do this morning? You ought to just get in this altar and ask God, help me to be a second mile Christian. Amen. Can you imagine? It, it, you, you'd enjoy church again, work again, your family again. Amen. Amen. Some of you young folks still rebelling, you ought to thank God that you got a roof over your head. You ought to thank God you got food at night. Come on now. They don't owe you nothing. <laughs> but by you know God help me to be a second mile Christian Amen. let's stand I'm through thanks to listeners like you IBC has had over 100,000 views on our YouTube channel if you haven't already subscribed today and as always thanks for listening